Hey everyone, it's Meredith, and today I'm gonna to show you how I made a glowing Encanto candle cookie. I started by flooding my cookie black, and then I used two different colors of yellow icing while it was still wet to dot in the background. I wanted to make sure the background wasn't disturbed by the painting that I was gonna do in just a little bit. Once my cookie was completely dry, I outlined the candle using an edible marker, and then I started painting around the candle flame with gel colors. This was a little bit of white and yellow mixed together. Once I had a bit of color on there, you can see I kind of started to buff it out towards the edge of the cookie. I wanted to make sure my color was more concentrated around the flame and then it kind of faded off into the darkness. I'm adding in a few different rounds of color to make the glow. So now I'm using some white food coloring again that's diluted a little bit with some vodka and I'm kind of starting the same process over. This time I'm bringing it down the sides of the candle. To add some fading glow to the sides of the candle, I'm adding a little bit of alcohol and then using the corner of a paper towel to pull it down the edge of the candle. Now I'm gonna build a more vibrant color around the flame. So I'm going along the edge of where the flame's gonna be with some more vibrant yellow gel color. And as I'm building more color, I'm going down the edge of the candle just slightly, but keeping it very close to the side of the candle and not too far out. And then I'm finishing it up with a little bit of white and yellow mixed together just to give a little bit more opacity to the glow so you can really see it. Now I'm gonna really blend this color out into the darkness. I'm using a pretty firm paintbrush that's flat edge and I have it just dampen slightly with a little bit of vodka and I'm pulling from the center outwards. Then I'm dabbing with my paper towel to help blend those lines a little bit. At this point, you really don't want a lot of dampness on your paintbrush because that's just going to wreck all of the color and run it together. So it's just slightly damp. I blended it out until I found the glow I was looking for. And next I flooded the candlestick using some white icing. Then I started piping in the base of the candle, alternating segments so each segment had a chance to dry and they wouldn't run together. So in the meantime, I used some of the same brown royal icing and put a little dab on my scribe tool to make the wick of the candle. Then I'm adding in the flame using some yellow royal icing that I will go over and paint once it's dry. After a few minutes, I go back and I add the rest of the segments into the base of the candle. All of the royal icing I'm using on top of the already flooded cookie is about 15 second royal icing, just so it's a little bit firmer and it's not going to create divots in the final piece once it dries. Once this next layer dried, I went back to add some shadows to the actual candlestick. For this, I'm using dust colors from the Sugar Art and I'm starting with some black and sunflower. I'm using the black at the base farthest away from the flame and then I'm gonna come in on the top using a little bit of the sunflower yellow. I'm starting with a little bit of color and then I'm going to continue to build on this until I get the look that I'm going for. The trick I used to blend these together seamlessly was Elite Color White from the Sugar Art. So between the sunflower and black, I added a little bit of white dust and blended them together seamlessly. When I'm using dusts like this, my paintbrush has barely any liquid on it. So it's really the dusts doing the work in the blending here.
I'm finishing this part up with just a hint of brown dust added to the bottom. Now I'm using stiffer white icing to pipe on the details. And like always, when I'm piping freehand, I have a reference photo nearby, so I'm looking at the actual photo of the candle while I'm piping. Very slowly, may I add, so I am going to speed up this section of the video just to spare you. In reality, this took me about just under five minutes to create the detail on top of the candle. When I'm freehanding, obviously I'm gonna go slow because I'm looking at a reference photo, but it's also nice when you're using a stiffer icing to pipe because you can go slower. It's not coming out of the bag at flood speed, so you can really take your time and lay it down where you need to. I also added a five to my candle because this was a personalized birthday cookie for a very special little guy. And then the final details I piped right along the edge so that it would appear like this candle was round and there was more detail on the other side. The next step was to cast a shadow on the ground from the candle. So I'm using the Sugar Art Elite black color and I'm going right along the edge and the left side of the base of the candle. And then I'm creating a, a shadow, kind of almost looks like a little champagne flute, just to give the appearance of the candle behind in the shadows, if that makes sense. And I do have a little bit of vodka mixed with the dust this time so that it's a little bit more like a paint. And then I go through and buff it out so it's got that shadowy feel to it. The final step was to add some detail to the flame. So I'm starting out on the top using some of the sunflower dust color mixed with a little bit of vodka to add a bit of yellow to the top of the flame and to the base where the flame starts from the wick. And then I'm adding a tiny bit of red to the center of that tiny flame because that is where the flame is hottest. And there we have our glowing Encanto candle. So the important takeaways for this cookie are, having a wet on wet spotted background creates a pretty base that is not gonna smudge when we paint on top of it. Painting the candle glow before we pipe on the candle creates a cleaner image overall. Then shadowing the candle itself, being darker at the bottom and lighter up top, helps to showcase the glow from the flame. Painting on a shadow around the base really locks in that glowing 3D effect. As always, thank you so much for watching and feel free to leave any questions in the comments.